Hey traders, checking into the stock market today. Started the morning with weakness with some daily consolidation shaping up. Bulls quickly showed up. Headline reactions. Where do we stand? I'll show you on the charts. All right, so as I mentioned in the video yesterday, I headed into this morning short, swinging some positions in the S&P 500 and in the biotech sector, short both of those names. And so I essentially approached this morning saying, I know I'm looking for daily consolidation. The bears liked how the morning was shaping up as we were seeing potential for gap down opens and those bounces ended up uh, following through enough that we didn't really see gap down opens, pre-market bounces. And so my mindset was, how long can bears convince me to hold these positions for? Because I'm scouting daily consolidation, but I also know the most likely scenario is a daily higher low to be the result of that consolidation. So during the morning live stream, essentially the information we were looking for was, is this a bull flag or not? Are these going to be daily bull flags or is the daily consolidation going to be significant enough that they are not daily bull flags? So that's the mindset that I went into heading into the morning. And it's very important to have that mindset because if I went into this morning saying, this is it, I nailed it. We're going to start daily consolidation. Weekly consolidation may shape up right after it. I would have given back all of my gains and then some. Instead, my mindset was extremely open knowing if bears don't convince me to hold these positions in the first half hour of trading, I'm going to be exiting them left and right. And so that saved me a decent bit of money. And essentially, I recognized that the biotech sector was relatively strong within the first couple minutes. I could see that was happening. And it didn't take long. Look at what XBI did in the first couple minutes, just four minutes of straight up and a 2% move from the initial low of the day. And at that same point in time, QQQ was not straight up. It was slowly straight up. So I just saw the biotech sector fast accelerating. So I exited LABD within the first few minutes on the live stream. And I did attempt one other top fish, essentially risking the profit of that position on the morning and stopped out because the biotech sector bulls kept their control. So in the end, it ended up being essentially just a uneventful swing trade for the biotech sector. And then for my SPY position, I held that a little bit longer. It was SPXS, the leverage ETF. I saw the weakness in the morning, but the entire time what stood out to me is number one, only one major sector was weak, the financial sector. Nobody else was joining Team Bear. Number two, the NASDAQ, when it did finally see some weakness and roll over into a new low of the day, held the lower pre-market with a double bottom. So here is the lower pre-market, 12,795, and we held that level straight into a significant bounce. The third factor was all of our major sectors hit the high of the day in unison at the same time later in the morning. That definitely showed me bear or bull confidence. And the fourth thing was growth sector stood out. So if you're going to see any kind of conviction, bullish conviction or bearish conviction, growth is generally going to lead in either direction. It's high risk, high reward. So if there's confidence in the market, it goes up. And if you look at the bounces percentage wise, percentage wise in both directions, the growth sector got absolutely smashed 80%, whatever, over the last bunch of months. And since the bottom, its bounces have been the biggest. So if growth is going to instantly stand out as lead bulls on the morning, that is going to make me much less confident in bears. And if you look at ARKK or any other growth name, they did what the biotech sector did. Keeping in mind the biotech sector, I consider a growth as well. So growth relative strength also helped me very quickly exit all of my short positions. I exited half of or a third of my SPXS on this little pullback right here, anticipating that this was a big enough bounce to look for an inverse head and shoulders to shape up a trend change. I exited another third when we broke that resistance level. And then I exited the final third when we hit the new high of the day. So just another example where I've been shorting through the biotech sector mostly last week, but other means yesterday and just small wins because I try and let it play out. The bulls prove themselves. And so I give back some of that profit and then just lock in small wins. So it's definitely made me a frustrated short-term bear, and that's with making some profit playing bearish. 
So I can only imagine those that are in the red trying to play bearish being even more frustrated. Just a quick note, going to do a public morning live stream, open house kind of deal next Tuesday, 9 a.m. Eastern. And I'll be live streaming for an hour and a half, the stock market open. And I'll post more information about that and we'll schedule that live stream shortly, but Tuesday, 9 a.m. Eastern. So then we had a news reaction and the news was China delaying blah, blah, blah for Tesla and Ford. I don't even know what they're delaying. They're delaying parts or something. And so the market reacts to that in the sense that they're now saying, okay, well, Pelosi going to Taiwan and maybe China's going to start res responding, retaliating economically. And so we saw a hard drop there. It was led by Tesla, who was the one that was specifically being impacted, but the broader market shifted momentum very notably for that 20 minute period. But it's important to note that if you don't show me this chart and you tell me, well, the SPY and the NASDAQ were overbought on the 30 minute, 15 minute, five minute time frame, and they tested the high of the move from yesterday, the high of the entire bounce in those conditions, and they rejected. I'd say, okay, that makes sense. The news definitely helps that rejection. It definitely magnified volume. It definitely sped things up. Then if you told me, yeah, and then we started hourly consolidation after that rejection, and we hit first five minute oversold conditions, and that marked the low of that pullback into a decent little five minute bounce. I would say, okay, well, that makes sense. So the, the technicals that played out, while again, magnified in terms of speed and volume, were not unusual at all. They're very normal price action. So it just affirms to me, stick to the charts. We rejected from resistance, being overextended into the test of them. We bounced off first five minute oversold conditions as a back burner trade, attempting to set an hourly high or low. We then tightened up into the end of the day and ended up pulling back a bit further. So essentially I'm heading into tomorrow with the same mindset. Are these daily bull flags or can bears prove to me that this consolidation is more significant? Either way, I'm scouting a daily high or low it's just how much pullback do we see before that daily high or low is set? A little bit of a downward support line to be keeping an eye on. If we hold the low of today in extended hours, it'll be an hourly high or low. The pullback is significant enough that we will then scout an hourly lower high to be the result of the next bounce. But I need to see during regular trading hours, give me all major sectors at the low at the same time. Give me bear volume that is notable. I need these things for me to say, all right, temporary tops are in and bears are taking short-term control. And we didn't see that today. The news definitely helped. The news essentially is potentially rejecting these daily bull flags, but I need to see bears break the lows of today, tomorrow and follow through. So with where I stand right now, I'm fairly flat and I have small bearish positions to offset my IRA long exposure because I want to head into tomorrow with a fresh, clean slate to see where we stand. So the lows of today will be key tomorrow. So for SPY, we're looking at 406.82. If it breaks, we're still going to look for first hourly oversold conditions, which we have not seen yet. And we're still going to be watching daily EMA 12 support, which is going to be catching up. And we can still watch our retracement size from the last daily high or low to gauge, is this a bull flag or not, using the 382 retracement. So the NASDAQ, not much different there. Another factor was the NASDAQ was our lead bull today. If I'm going to have confidence as a bear, I want the NASDAQ being a lead bear. And it was clearly a lead bull from the morning. And again, that new low of the day, like, oh, bears are finally getting it. Nope, V-shake, new high of the day off the low of pre-market. So it's the same thing here. If we break the low of today, tomorrow, hourly oversold conditions will be approaching. We'll be watching daily EMA 12. And the hourly downtrend will be our guide. Clear rejections from resistance at this point. There is a double top on both QQQ and SPY. So bears played defense today. They didn't do anything on offense. And watching to see, can they break some support levels and head down to going on offense? Semiconductors, bull break without much follow through. AMD after hours earnings, bearish. You can see the reaction on SMH. So AMD dropping. Not much. We're at the low of the day, but enough to have SMH near its low of the day. So SMH potentially going to start daily consolidation, which has not even happened yet. If we break 233.98 and 233.65, 
that daily consolidation will be underway. Tesla daily consolidation started today with a gap down. Again, bulls bought the dip significantly, but we're not confident in the daily higher low being set unless the bulls regain an hourly uptrend. So we would have to hold the low of today and break the high of today for that hourly uptrend to confirm. But we can certainly say at this point, it is healthy daily consolidation. There are no red flags as we look for a higher low, anything above 768.79. And we still have not seen first hourly oversold conditions yet. Healthcare, definitely reverse things by the end of the day, closing near the low. I'm watching support of 129.92, which needs to break for bears to start to prove anything to me on this daily chart. The financial sector, more convincing daily consolidation is underway. We know this is a weaker sector overall, and so there's less space to work with. If we look at from the recent high, we can pull back 4% before daily high or low support. And we look at the NASDAQ from the recent high, we can pull back over 7%. So it's a very big difference. And we're watching to see, does XLF and XLV, does their daily consolidation weigh on SPY? Again, key for me, for bears to, to flash the light in my brain and say, hey, pay attention, all major sectors dropping to the low of the day at the same time. Today was the opposite. We did it at, at the high of the day for bulls. Can bears do it? at the lows to show us money leaving the market and not just rotation. Growth names, again, very notable to me that their strength stood out. Growth names were positioned well to shape up daily lower highs on any broader market consolidation, and that shifted after 20 minutes of trading today when they just all shot up while the broader market bounced around and didn't do a whole lot for bulls. So CRWD is still climbing up towards its resistance. ARKK maintaining the daily support levels, PLTR breaking to a higher high. So that today essentially shifts my perspective where I was scouting daily lower highs on growth names and I no longer am looking aggressively bearish at them. Some of them can definitely still form those lower highs, but Snow's another one. But again, this is as far as growth names are concerned, this is the strongest relative strength day that they've seen, ARKK divided by SPY. That's the most significant bullish relative strength day that we've seen in the last almost two weeks of trading. So that definitely gets my attention in terms of that relative strength. So I'm, I'm personally focused on those growth names a lot less. For me, it's just the biotech sector for my day trading in both directions. And so that's the exposure and cannabis. Let's look at cannabis. Those are the names where I'm focusing on growth, not these individual names. So biotech sector confirmed the daily downtrend with the head and shoulders. What do we get when we confirm a downtrend with zero follow through? We zoom out and look for the potential flag. This is a potential weekly bull flag. Bulls still need an hourly trend change back in their favor. If we're going to say that's a daily bear break with zero follow through, but for now, this weekly consolidation is healthy. We did double top at the high of yesterday by five pennies. But again, after that morning move, I was done scouting bearish in the biotech sector for the day. Too much relative strength. And so now it's just a question of can bulls shape up a weekly bull flag or not? And if you look at XBI divided by SPY, we can see strongest relative strength day in a couple weeks. Cannabis names, CGC, big day for Canadian cannabis names, up double-digit percentages, still working on this two-day trend change. So we have not seen a two-day uptrend since February. So bulls are trying to pull this off for the first time in six months. And it's the same for TLRY, trying to shape up that two-day trend change. This is the kind of scenario where we saw it just happen in crypto. So this video is getting a bit long, but I'll try and speed it up. So crypto had a four week bounce from extreme oversold conditions and most names went 50 to 100% plus. There were some smaller, lower cap names that did not participate at all. They just traded sideways and did nothing. Then those smaller names, let's look at them real quick, played catch up very quickly. So this is doing nothing while the entire crypto space bounces. And then in two days, we catch up to everybody else. Short squeeze, low liquidity, 
79% move in two days. This is just one example. There's a few more. So this to me shows continued confidence for bulls of the entire crypto space as a whole, and then looking for the laggards. Well, who hasn't run yet? Who can we take profits and put it into? So I'm viewing the, the cannabis space as the same, where if broader market strength continues, if daily uptrends continue, and this bounce keeps seeing new highs, I'm going to be looking for this sector to act as a laggard as people look at growth and say, okay, well, most growth names have bounced 50 to 100%. This sector is not participating much at all and look for it to be a laggard to then get that move. And it doesn't take much to get pressure on shorts in this sector. And, you know, you show me this weekly chart. I'm not comfortable bearish here. You, you might not be comfortable bullish because of the prolonged downtrend. That's fine. You can certainly understand that. But the base of support that's being built down here after such a massive sell-off, I'm not comfortable bearish either. So after a day like today, keep an eye on this sector because if TLRY breaks 416, it's the first two-day uptrend in a very, very long time. And CGC, same thing. So we're keeping an eye on them to be laggards if the broader market bulls stay strong. And we do have earnings still coming in this sector, which will be a factor as well. But especially for day trading, I mean, the, the volatility, look at the start to the day here showing that growth strength. Just a complete significant bull move of 15, 16% in less than an hour. So there is long opportunity, there's short opportunity. I did a little top fishing. I made some money bearish in the sector today. Certainly not as much if I was on that initial bull move, which I missed, but still plenty of opportunity in both directions for this sector. And I do believe volatility will continue to pick up and we could see some short squeeze like action if the broader market bulls keep confident in their bounces. Solar sector scouting a daily higher low gap down open bulls bought it significantly, but we do still need, well, something happened after hours. I don't know who had earnings in the in the solar sector, but it's definitely having an impact. So if we break the low today, tomorrow, we'll be keeping an eye out still for hourly oversold conditions and our daily higher low will not be set yet. CCJ also scouting a daily higher low, also a potential daily bull flag as long as EMA 12 support remains. The dollar bouncing. So the, the broader market starts daily consolidation. The dollar starts a daily bounce. Bulls need a four-hour trend change back in their favor on the dollar for bounce follow-through. But big picture, weekly EMA 12 and still a very healthy weekly uptrend intact. If I'm a broader market bear looking for weekly consolidation, I want this dollar bull move to continue notably. Gold and silver pulling back. They were overextended on a live stream this morning, commenting how bulls look tired as bull breaks were starting to lack follow through. We had a, a channel on gold. Again, tune in to the live stream Tuesday, 9 a.m. to see what we do in the mornings. But this was a really nice hourly channel guide. Broke bear, daily consolidation underway. Silver had a four-hour head and shoulders that we were watching this morning. And that played out. So definitely a good area for bulls to be taking some profit as daily consolidation is underway. And now we're going to scout a daily higher low to be the result of this pullback. But temporary top set in the metals. Miners broke resistance finally straight into a low of the day close, which does keep a weekly bear flag alive. This is a weekly bear flag unless bulls prove to us that it is not. Oil, not much going on. Still fairly range bound. Burden certainly on bulls. Inventory report tomorrow will either have us heading back up towards 101 resistance or have us break 93 support convincingly to head down to the recent low. Nat gas, four hour bear flag with no follow through, got a bounce, but we never changed the four hour trend. At this point, I'm watching this channel and I'm watching to see if we head down to this support line in first four hour oversold conditions, scouting a daily higher low. So if I'm an aggressive bull, I'm keeping an eye out on that downtrend support and keeping an eye out for first four hour oversold Still have to use a stop loss because we certainly can see extremes in both directions in that gas. So uneventful day for me overall. I think I might have been up a tiny 
fraction of a day maker. So I'm heading into tomorrow flat. I'm gonna take what the day gives me. I don't have a bias into tomorrow. I have to see where we are shaping up. I had a bear bias into today, but bulls quickly erased that to me, for me. And other than that, keeping an eye on the cannabis sector in case that bull volume continues. Appreciate you watching. Thanks for the likes and shares for you loyal viewers. And do good things. Something's moving under the water there. It's just a trail of bubbles. Probably the muskrat. Blue heron from two days ago, decomposing very fast. Mostly feathers left. Oh damn, look at that guy. There's never been a turtle in this pond before. Gonna have to keep an eye on him. It's a snapping turtle. Although there was one, that's probably the same one. There was one at the end of the driveway, all the way down there. And he was living at that drain pipe. And I had to drive around him one day. Didn't feel like picking him up. We'll see how it goes.